Hey guys, my name is Vishwas and welcome to a brand new series on React Hooks. In this introductory video, we will talk about the what and why of React Hooks and in the rest of the series, we will dive deeper into the world of React Hooks. Before we begin, I just want to tell you that I am assuming you know the basics of React. You don't have to be an expert by any means, but the very basics of React like functional components, class components, props and state are all required to get the most out of the series. If you are a complete beginner, I highly recommend you go through the React for Beginner series on my channel before you continue. I have covered in detail all the fundamental concepts in React. I would also recommend watching the beginners series completely and then start learning about hooks as it is going to make it so much easier for you to understand the motivation behind hooks. With that in mind, let's begin. What are hooks in React? Hooks are a new feature addition in React version 16.8 which allow you to use React features without having to write a class. For example, a React component's state. Previously, you could use state only within class components. With hooks, it is now possible to use state and also other React features without writing a class. What you should keep in mind is that hooks don't work inside classes. They let you use React without classes. Alright, now that we know hooks are a feature to use other React features without using a class, let us understand the motivation for hooks. Why did the React team feel that there was a necessity for a feature like hooks? This is also the place where your knowledge of React fundamentals and experience creating React apps will help you better relate to the different reasons. The first reason is more related to JavaScript than React itself. To work with classes, you have to understand how this keyword works in JavaScript which is very different from how it works in most other languages. People can understand props, state and unidirectional data flow but will struggle to implement class components. You also have to remember to bind event handlers in class components. On the React side, it is also observed that classes don't minify very well and make hot reloading very unreliable. With hooks, since you're not working with classes anymore, you will not have to face these problems. Let's take a look at the second reason. This reason kind of touches on the advanced topics in React such as higher order components and the render props pattern. Having worked with React, you would have learned that there is no particular way to reuse stateful component logic between components. The HOC and render props patterns do address this problem, but you would have to restructure your components which kind of results in awkward looking code. You end up wrapping your components with several other components to share the functionality. This only makes the code harder to follow. So there is a need to share stateful logic in a better way. Hooks help us in this aspect by allowing us to reuse stateful logic without changing your component hierarchy. The final reason is to do with how code is placed in a component and the fact that complex components become hard to understand. When you've had to create components for complex scenarios such as data fetching and subscribing to events, you would have realized that the related code is not organized in one place but scattered across different lifecycle methods. For example, data fetching is usually done in component did mount and sometimes also in component did update. If you have to set event listeners, you set them up in component did mount and unsubscribe in component will unmount. As you can see, related code which is data fetching is split between component did mount and component did update. Code for event listeners again is in different methods component did mount and component will unmount. Completely unrelated code on the other hand, that is data fetching and event listeners, 
end up in the same code block. That is, both of them end up in component did mount. And because of the stateful logic, in many cases, it's not possible to break these components into smaller ones. It would be so much better if all the related code was together. This is another problem hooks solve. Rather than forcing a split based on lifecycle methods, hooks let you split one component into smaller functions based on what pieces are related. So these reasons are the motivation behind hooks. All right, now let me also mention a few noteworthy points. To be able to use hooks, you have to use React version 16.8 or higher. But the best part is that hooks are completely opt-in. You don't have to learn or use hooks if you don't want to. Hooks don't contain any breaking changes and the release is 100% backwards compatible. The React team also does not have any plans of removing classes from React. You can continue to use classes and gradually start rewriting them with hooks if it is simple and you feel confident. You can't use hooks inside a class component, but your app can definitely mix classes and functional components with hooks. The bottom line is hooks don't replace your existing knowledge of React concepts. Instead, Hooks provide a more direct API to the React concepts you already know, such as props, state, context, refs, and lifecycle. Before winding up this introduction, let's quickly take a look at the summary. Hooks are a new feature addition in React version 16.8. They allow you to use React features without having to write a class. There are three important reasons for the introduction of hooks. By not having to use classes, hooks avoid the whole confusion with this keyword. Since hooks don't need a class, React components will also minify better. The second reason is that hooks allow you to reuse stateful logic without changing your component hierarchy. You can avoid advanced React patterns to a great extent which makes the code much simpler to follow. The final reason is that hooks let us organize the logic inside a component into reusable isolated units. Mutually related code can be put together which will avoid trivial bugs and inconsistencies. Now that we have a solid understanding about the what and why of hooks, let's start with our very first hook in the next video. Thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.